Royal author Omid Scobie has revealed details of an alleged power struggle between King Charles and Prince William. His new book, Endgame, will be released at midnight and it's set to feature all sorts of royal drama, including more details about Mexit. Omid says Meghan Markle was not interviewed for his latest book, but admitted he has mutual friends with her. Joining me in the studio, Talk TV's royal editor Sarah Hewson. So we do know various droplets from the book already, don't we? Yes, as you said, Vanessa, it's out at midnight, but it has now been published in Australia. So uh, people who are speed reading in Australia <laughs> yes. and then writing up uh, what they've seen. And I think it's important that we say that we haven't read it in full. No, and, not our full. We would have we, done if we could. We would have done. done if we'd had access yes. to it. Um, and much like with Spare, when that was released in Spain, we got these excerpts and headlines, all of which are the most dramatic yes. moments out of the book. And we haven't seen it in its greater context. Having said that, what is coming out is criticism of pretty much every member of the royal family. Mm -hmm. Including Harry and Meghan or not including Harry? Uh, no, if I read you the New York Times review, um, it says um, whether or not Scobie actively collaborated with Meghan and Harry for the book, he does them no favours. Their chapter reads like a press release cooked up by chat GPT wow. and does little to shed light on them as humans. So I think we know um, <laughs> where this book is coming from because although Omid um, Scobie doesn't like at the label, he is often called their cheerleader, their mouthpiece here in the UK. He has he denied- He says he's not. He says, I'm not their friend, I'm not their mouthpiece. Yeah, he said he's not their friend. He said that he hasn't spoken to them uh, for this book, but they do have mutual friends and that has been useful in getting information. So what do we know so far that we didn't know before that he claims is true? Um, there's not a lot that we didn't know the sort of basis mm -hmm. of. There's no big bombshell in here, but it is critical of members of the royal family, in particular Kate. I mean, that's always going to get the headlines, so it's where people yes. are going to turn to at first. He describes her in the book as cold. He criticises her for advocating mental health causes while ignoring her own sister-in-law's uh, cries for help. He says she's technically a part-time working royal. He describes her as being Katie Keene and says the Queen liked her because she was coachable unlike the strong-minded Princess Diana. And he said she isn't known for her leadership and outgoing nature like Meghan. She's frightened of doing anything other than a photo op. She glides under the radar. She's never challenged the system with public struggles or oversized aspirations. I mean, you can criticise her for that. Or on the other hand, yes, you, can you can say, say that actually she... she knew what she was doing. She married into this institution and she knew her job was to serve the crown and the monarchy, and in doing so, you take a leaf out of the Queen's book mm. and you never complain. Absolutely. And, and you, you could also explain. say that she's born three children and that's part of her job as a full-time working royal is to bring up the children. And, and, and also that she was desperately ill each time with incredible morning sickness, so severe that she had to be, you know, hospitalised for a good chunk of the nine months, three times running. I mean, mm. she's, I mean, I think lots of people think she's been very staunch and, 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 and you know, and, that, and also she brings great good humour broad smiles, real kind of enthusiasm, always down at the child's level, always kind of um, it's so so beautifully mannered, I always think. Whereas in, even the late Queen and Princess Anne could look very mulish on occasion, yeah, thoroughly she, fed up and bored and cross. She never does that. She looks very natural she does. when she's surrounded by children. But what Omid Scobie says in his book is that we infantilise her, that we say that things that she does, like playing football or getting down and, and playing with children, just normal things get yeah. far too much attention um, and but I, I, I don't think that the Princess of Wales has ever claimed to be particularly confident in public speaking or ever wanted to particularly put her head above uh, the parapet. She's very different to Meghan, who was used to being in the spotlight as an actress and very much more at ease. Kate has had to learn that. But don't we think... esteem her especially because of that? Don't we like the way she doesn't seem to want the spotlight and she isn't trying to champion any kind of controversial cause that gets in the way of what they're trying to do? But she also knows it's her job now to stand up and she has found causes that she's really passionate about the early years, for example. She's pulled together a big symposium in the last few weeks. She had, you know, Tony Blair, William Hague and things there. She stood up on stage and spoke. It's not her comfort zone, yeah. but it is her job to do that. And uh, she feels passionately about that. And I think, look, the comparisons were made, weren't they? Remember that image of the Fab Four when they were doing the Heads Together campaign and their foundation? Megan, much more at ease than Kate, and those comparisons aren't healthy. Uh, no, thank you very much. Can't wait to see the books.